Hello and welcome once again to Bible Class Topics. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to start another playlist of topical sermons and we're going to begin with one that I've entitled Backsliding Leads to Apostasy. And it's about the danger of returning to our life of the old man before we put on Christ, before we put on the new man. So apostasy, it sounds like apostles, but it's not apostles, it's apostasy. And to be an apostate means you are one who originally believes something, but you either, you've abandoned it for whatever reason, abandoned your belief, and you could have abandoned it because you don't believe it anymore, or you've taken your original belief and perverted it. Now, what causes apostasy? Well, I would say that the prime cause of apostasy is dead faith, and that leads us to James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, and we will be reading from the ESV. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, it, if it does not have works, is dead. So the prime cause of apostasy is a faith that was originally alive, but for whatever reasons, have become, has become a dead faith. And that's why we want to talk about the related topic uh, in just a moment of backsliding. Let's, but before we do that, let's turn to Galatians 5 and verse 6, because I want to say a few things about that now and, and in the next point. Uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians, Galatians 5 and verse 6, he says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. So what counts for anything? According to Paul, the apostle, it is a faith working through love. So dead faith, as we've discussed now in James chapter 2, stands in opposition to a working faith as described by Paul in his Galatian letter. So, here's what we have. You've got no works. That leads you to a dead faith. You've got a dead faith. That's going to lead you to an abandoning of what you had originally believed. Apostasy. Well, Let's talk about backsliding, and why are we saying that backsliding leads to apostasy? If you have a goal and do not continually work towards it, then you are backsliding. Let's give an illustration. A few years ago, uh, the doctors uh, and my own personal health convinced me that I need to make some lifestyle changes. And the first lifestyle change I needed to make was to adjust my eating habits to containing a lot less refined sugar. So my goal was to do away with refined sugar in my diet. This began to help me feel better. But the doctor added to it, he said, look, you can change your diet, but if you do not increase your exercise, it's not going to help you as much in the long run. So I determined to start walking two miles a day. Now, if I'm going to walk two miles away, uh, two miles a day, then if I don't walk, I'm not going to make two miles a day. If I walk part way and turn back and come home, I'm still not going to make two miles a day. If I decide to not walk 
two miles a day, but I feel like I should get in my two miles and I get on my bicycle and ride two miles a day, that's not the same thing. If I decide to get in my golf cart and ride two miles a day, that's not the same thing. So, backsliding, you have a goal and you continually work towards that goal. So if you stand still, you're not working toward the goal. Or if you turn away from that goal and go off toward a different goal, you are backsliding. The Christian's goal is doing the will of Christ. Doing is the key word. And, of course, the second and third key word is doing what? The will. The will of who? The will of Christ Jesus. As we already uh, mentioned in Galatians 5 and verse 6, it has to be a working faith. Uh, elsewise, it will be a dead faith. Well, how do we contrast backsliding to apostasy? As long as we're working, as long as we're headed in the right direction, uh, trying to attain our goal, we are staying away from apostasy. Remember, apostasy is the total abandonment of our belief. But backsliding, we're still trying somewhat to approach the kind of thing that we need to embrace our belief, but we're being hindered in some way. So let's think about some examples of what causes backsliding, and we'll start to see what kind of things are hindering us uh, in contributing and continuing in our walk with Jesus Christ. Let's talk about the fact of absence of spiritual leaders for a moment, and let's uh, read a little bit from Exodus um, Chapter what, 32, Exodus 32. All right, I'm finding it. Exodus chapter 32. And we want to read eight verses. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in your ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, These are your gods. O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down, for your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. So in the absence of spiritual leaders, in the absence of Moses, the children of Israel begin to backslide. Could Moses have prevented it if he was there with them? Possibly. However, we understand that after being given a chance to repent, much of Israel still gave up on their belief. When Moses saw that the people had broken loose, for Aaron had let them break loose to the derision of their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered around him. If you continue reading in Exodus uh, chapter 32, uh, you'll see that a lot of the folks in the, among the children of Israel never returned and they apostatized and lost their lives. 
So backsliding can be caused by the absence of spiritual leaders, people to keep you going in the right direction. We also see that backsliding can be called, caused by evil associations. The typical passage uh, that we think of when we think about evil associations or evil companions, we go right to 1 Corinthians 15.33. Now the ESV says, Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. And there is an alternate reading uh, given in the ESV, if I can call it up here. Um, and I believe it's the King James Version that says evil companionships can corrupt good manners. But I think our saying bad company ruins good morals is, an, is a good uh, explanation of what's going on. An extreme example of bad company uh, corrupting good morals is the story of the fall of Solomon the king. This story is told to us in uh, 1 Kings 11 verses 1 through 4. Now King Solomon loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidon uh, Sidonian, and Hittite women. From the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, You shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. He had 700 wives who were princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Let's read one more verse. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. When we study David in the, in the Old Testament, we see that even though he had his ups and downs in his life, when he died, he was in a right relationship with God. But his son Solomon started out great guns. He was given to be the wisest man in the world. But by the time he dies, we see that in his old age, he was under control of these foreign wives and their gods. So, Solomon is influenced by 1,000 evil companions, and he eventually abandons God. What about worldly success? Let's read a couple of more passages. Worldly success can be something that can cause us to backslide in our beliefs. Let's begin with 1 Timothy 6, verses 7 through 10. Now, I'm going to break into the middle of a sentence. Well, let's go back to the beginning of the sentence, which uh, is actually verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Why? For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we should be content. But those who desire to be rich, what? Fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. One more verse. For the love of money is what? The root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Jesus had somewhat to say about this in Matthew chapter 19, and we'll read verses 23 and 24. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. So we see that worldly success means there's less time for God and more time taken up with our worldly matters. In line with this is basic love of the world. Not only worldly success, but pure out love for the world as con contrasted with uh, love for God. So, let's look at 2 Timothy 4 and verse 10.
He, Paul tells Timothy, do your best to come to me soon. That's verse 9. For Demas, that's someone who had been a helper for Paul, Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone on to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Well, we have nothing negative here about Crescens and Titus other than they had to leave Paul. But notice that Paul says that Demas has deserted me. Why? He was in love with this present world. Worldly things such as lust, gambling, alcohol, drugs, uh, entertainment, etc., are what lead to the apostasy or led to the apostasy of Demas. We don't know specifically what it is, but things of this world. Finally, the fifth thing we want to talk about as causing backsliding is shallowness. Let's go uh, first to Luke 8 and verse 13. So in Luke 8 and verse 13, Jesus says, And the ones on the rock are those who, when they heard the word, received it with joy, but they have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, fall away. So I've jumped in right into the middle of the so-called uh, parable uh, of the sower. And you'll notice that when you read the parable of the sower, starting back in chapter 8, verses 4 through um, 8, that the sower came and he threw out seed, and some of it fell on the path. It was trampled underfoot. The birds devoured it. Some fell on the rock, and it grew up, and it withered away because it had no moisture. So then he begins to explain the parable to his disciples, and he says, The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, they receive it with joy, but they have no root. In other words, they are shallow. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, they fall away. These shallow Christians are barely hanging on. At the slightest temptation, they fall. This is apostasy. Let's look uh, in a couple of other passages. First of all, we'll look at John 6, uh, 63. Jesus says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Continuing. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. Now jump down to verse 66. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. They turn back. And so we see our example of apostasy in which their backsliding, their unbelief, their fact that they loved the world more than they loved the Lord caused them to turn back. Let's look at Paul's instructions to the young preacher Timothy. And we'll look in 1 Timothy uh, 5 this time. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 15. And let's go back a verse. So I would have the younger widows marry, bear children, manage their household, and give uh, the adversary no occasion for slander. He's talking about being busybodies and being gossipers. In verse 15, for some have already strayed after Satan. They've turned and followed after Satan. They have begun to backslide, and if it continues, they will end up as apostates. Here are our concluding thoughts. Five things have been shown which could cause one to backslide. The absence of spiritual leaders, evil associations, worldly success, love of the world, and shallowness. 
Christ had an opinion about backsliders, and we'll read two more scriptures concerning that. And when I say Christ had an opinion, I should know better than to call what Christ has to say his opinion. It is to the Christian law. Jesus said to a man, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. So once we begin our, our following Christ, once we begin to do his will, if we look back, then we are no longer fit for the kingdom of God. And then there are those that just don't want to do anything. Jesus also has something to say about them. In the book of Revelation, the first three chapters, he writes uh, letters to the so-called seven churches of Asia. To the church at Laodicea, in Revelation uh, 3 and verse 15, he tells the Laodiceans, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. So Christ has an attitude. Earlier I said opinion, and I should have said the word attitude. He has an attitude toward backsliding. He is against it. And he's against it because he understands what will happen when you backslide. Four out of our five examples that we've already looked at, Moses, Solomon, uh, those that are chasing worldly success, Demas, and people with shallowness, as in the parable of the sower, four of those five examples, if you read the context, they not only were backsliding, but they eventually apost apostatized and they were no longer in a right relationship with Jesus. Therefore, they were no longer in a right relationship with God the Father. So here's what we've seen in our lesson today. First of all, we see that backsliding has led to apostasy, and we understand that apostasy, as Jesus said, they turned aside to Satan, will lead to eternal death. I understand that this type of lesson is not fun. It's not fun to study it. It's not fun to present it. But it is needed. It is needed for us to hear. Because we, as Christians, do not want to fall into such a trap. Thank you for watching. Your support of this channel is greatly appreciated. It's a blessing to me that you are out there watching these videos. You could help me more by subscribing to this channel. Press the notification bell so that you'll know when I'm posting a new sermon or Bible class topic. Hit the like button. Even if you hit the dislike button, that would help this channel. And if you leave a comment, I would certainly appreciate it. Until we meet again next time, may God bless.